<clears throat> yo, yo, what's up, man? This is your boy Germs from Germs Boxing, aka Germs Sudam is the boxing prophet. Yeah, I know I haven't made a video for a minute. Um, you know, no excuses, but uh, uh, I needed to upgrade my fucking uh, my flash, my whatever it is. The whole Mac was I needed to upgrade it. For some reason, every time I try to upload it, it would you know it would upload like halfway and then stop. I couldn't upload music, but for some reason, I couldn't upload videos. I don't know. But um, now I got the iLife 11, whatever, look, whatever, you know, you, all you computer nerds who don't know what I'm talking about. But basically, um, you know, I'm able to run this shit normally again. Now, apparently I was running on uh, outdated shit, but I got like uh, 10, 11, 12 fights. I want to, I want to do predictions for enough fights to make three videos. Okay. I haven't made a video since J January. So I'm making it up for, by doing the extra videos. So, you know, I'm going to be after this video, look for other videos. Cause I'm going to be making a couple more like right, like today, like right now I'm going to record all of them in one shot. But, um, I just wanted to have so much to talk about, man. You know, ever since we, ever since the last time I met you, um, I mean, I saw you, um, I wanted to first talk about Bernard Hopkins. I mean, that's a big thing because in my last prediction, I predicted that Hopkins was going to lose. I predicted that, that he was going to get old. You know, basically I'm ashamed that I didn't give him the credit that, I, that he deserved, you know, because, you know, a, a couple of videos ago, like probably four or five videos ago, I was, I gave you guys a big old speech about Bernard Hopkins and how much he means to me but when he took the fight against clout i thought i just thought that was the riskiest fucking move not just me everybody thought that was the riskiest move he could ever take and and, and clout being a strong solid motherfucker we expected a lot from clout and somehow bernard's mental mind fucks got to him it got to him because you see this is one thing i didn't know about clout clout is only good when he has his feet solid you see i never i'm analytical i love analyzing people's weaknesses and strengths that's one thing that passed me up if i would have known that i would have predicted hopkins to win because the thing is clout doesn't punch until he's set uh, that's a slugger that's basically a puncher trying to box that's not good that's not good you see you had to break bernard down you had to go to the body Bernard kept turning him around, turning him around. He kept, you know, doing his tactics, you know, hit him, hit him, bam, you know, boom, grab him, grab him, hold him, turn him, turn him, hold him, old school tactics, you know. I guess this is one of those things where, where your undefeated record kind of like gets the best of you because you never learn how to lose. You don't know how to lose. So therefore, when you're on the way of losing, in the way of losing, um, then you don't know how to react. You freeze. Uh, the crowd gets to you, you know, they, then next thing you know, you fold inwards, you know, then that's, that's what happened with Bernard Hopkins, breaking his own record, becoming the oldest man to win the, the championship, a uh, championship at any sport. And, and, and you know what, Bernard Hopkins is on a league of, his, of his own, man. You, you see, they compare him to Archie Moore. I think he's better than Archie Moore, man. I mean, I mean, I understand Archie Moore has all those fights and he's got his mongoose thing that which I mean, Bernard Hopkins probably got his style from. But I, I think that Bernard Hopkins is in the league of his own, you know, like a category. You know, you got your greats, you got your goods, and then you got your teachers, professors, you know, Robinson-esque. And that's Hopkins right there. So I wanted to just say that. Another thing before I do the predictions, I wanted to talk about a fucking... A, a war, a war that I just went to. What's his name? Provodnikov. Provodnikov. Was it a Russian dude? Provodnikov. I think it was Provodnikov versus Bradley. Tim Bradley. Uh, Bradley apparently had a. He says he had a concussion, like in the first, in the opening rounds or whatever. But you know what? I've never seen a fight this. Like I mean, I've seen brutal fights before, like back in the day. You know, like old school 1960s, 50s, 70s. But not recently, man. This shit was like this shit made. Uh, it was like like the good rounds of Gotti Ward versus uh, Arturo Gotti versus Mickey Ward, like the best rounds of that in one fight. Uh, uh, dude, Provodnikov would just wallop Bradley so much. Bradley was pretty much out on his feet, like, Ugh! and Bradley was still like swinging, like you know, and he wasn't even right in his eyes yet. Dude, I honestly, I think I would have stopped it, and and I don't think anyone would have a problem with it if the referee would have stopped it early. Now, a lot of people are saying it's a robbery, you know, no bullshit. With 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 um with Timothy Bradley, you, um, okay, who is it? Timothy Bradley, and. Juan Manuel Marquez are the only two fighters. When I see them fight, I always pull out my pen and my piece of paper. You know, I try to, I try to um, 
judge the fight at the same time when I'm watching it because these guys have those styles that kind of like adapt. They they have the, t the styles to adapt to the other person. And, the, and, and, and I mean, Timothy Bradley has never get gypped, but he, you know, obviously he gypped Pacquiao. So I wanted to see, I wanted to kind of like um, see if, if, if this fight would have any robberies. And I'll tell you this much, it had a robbery, but it wasn't the judges. The judges didn't rob the fight. It was the referee because in the first round, Provodnikov knocked down Bradley with a solid ass punch. Boom! Wild of him, made him fucking. Uh, uh, he 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 noodled him to the ground by a punch. It was a straight. I was it a right hand or a looping right hand or whatever punch it was. He knocked him down. The ref didn't count it a knockdown. Bradley won on two scorecards for one point. One point. Now, if that knockdown would have counted, it would have been a draw. So the only robbery here was, it was actually, it was not even a robbery. It was like a oops, you know, it was just so much. The referee got discombobulated. You know, you saw Bradley getting ragdolled on the floor by Provognikov. And, uh, you know, a lot of things went on. The punch didn't land right before it was a delayed punch. So, you know, you can you can give it up to him. But that was the robbery right there. That moment, his attention, his, his, the, the, the fact that he, he got discombobulated, that was the robbery right there. He let it go and, and therefore it wasn't a draw. It was a one point win for Timothy Bradley. Even though Provodnikov did enough, enough to win the fight, uh, I, I don't think it was a robbery. I don't think it was a robbery. Like I said, the only robbery technically was the referee's lack of attention during that moment when he got when you got let the moment get a, let the moment get the best of him. Okay, so that's that's how I want to say that about that. Um, so now there's these new there's these fights coming up. Um, I think one one is like from Canada, Lucien Boutte versus Jean Pascal. Um, I ain't got to worry too much about that. Well, I mean that that fight is not really flashy here, but over there in Canada, that's probably kind of like to the same level as um uh for two two american uh oh whatever whatever it's like it's like you know like a ortiz versus canelo you know what i mean but in, in canada uh, I, I mean yeah, ortiz went back when he was in his prime you know what i'm saying i mean i am I'm, I'm pretty slow right now i can't come up with a uh like a, a similar fight but i th it's a pretty big fight over there in canada lucien boute versus jean pascal lucien boute doesn't really have to worry much. The only thing he has to worry about is trying to time a, a sloppy runner. You see, uh, Jean Pascal, he is athletically, athletically sloppy. That's his style. He kind of like, you know, goes sideways, sideways. He doesn't really dance like Ali, you know, when he's dancing from far away. He tries to tap, tap, jab, jab, cross up, you know, combinations. Now, Pascal, he does the scissors, you know. He, he kind of goes sideways. It's kind of like the shit that he learns in, in, at the gym, you know what I mean? Um uh lucien boutet is uh southpaw uh what was it southpaw yeah i think he's southpaw and and the thing is boutet loves to do that counter left uppercut the counter left up just like zap judah the 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 left hook coming uh splitting up the middle how can he catch pascal going around and around the only way he can catch pascal is if he breaks pascal down through the body you know when he starts if he starts looping that 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 uppercut to the body but here's the thing Pascal with his running thing, with his running slopping, I just thought about it. You see, I was about to give the fight to Lucien Boutet, and I just thought about something right now. Um, Froch, Froch is in the dan a fancy fighter, and he cut off the ring on Lucien Boutet and eventually broke him down. Jean Pascal, he can dance around him. I didn't think about that because Boutet doesn't cut you off. Boutte tries to stalk you. That's all he is, just a stalker. I think Pascal's gonna beat Boutte, now that I think about it. Now, now that I'm breaking it down, I, I just saw Pascal get, you know, start out boxing, um, turning what's his name around, and, 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 and Lucien Boutte never getting his feet set, and try to get that one punch that re that made his money maker, that, that, that counter left up, because he's not even gonna get that one in. It's, 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 it's not gonna be as easy. Um, yeah, I just thought about it. Yeah, Lucien Boutet is going to lose against uh, Jean Pascal. Uh, I think I said it backwards earlier. Yeah, but Jean Pascal is going to use his athletically sloppiness eventually to turn around Lucien Boutet and eventually knock him out. I mean, not knock him out, out point him. Not, <laughs> I didn't mean knock out. I mean, out point him. I think that Lucien Boutet is not going to be able to find that, find that mark. And, and by the time he starts dinging Jean Pascal, I think Jean Pascal will be so far on points that you know it's gonna be a little harder 
um, you know, for Lucian Boutet to win. And I think Pascal's gonna win. Yeah, I think Pascal. I mean, they might steal it from him because Lucien Boutet is Lucien Boutet. I mean, I think he's got a bigger fan base over there. But um, Pascal, his his athletic, his sloppiness, I think is gonna is gonna be enough to beat Jean, uh, 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 Lucien Boutet. And yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's that that fight for that fight. I, I was gonna give it to Lucien Boutet when I first started breaking it down, but then I started seeing the fight uh, visually. You know, it's not all the time. You know, don't get me wrong. I love when my fights when I get my fights wrong. You know, predictions wrong because that means that I'm sur I got surprised. You know, when when Hopkins won, you have no idea what kind of a frenzy I was going, getting into. Like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. You know what I mean? And and, and, and it, it, it it I love that. I love I love uh, you know seeing the unexpected or at least what I think is unexpected. You know, that's what matters. You know, to me. But um, you know, if 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 if, Luc if Jean Pascal beats Lucien, B no, if Lucien Boutet finds a way to fucking land that punch, and 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 probably like right on the stomach, boom, that left uppercut right on the stomach, and and keep Jean Pascal from moving around so much, and start dinging him and breaking him down, and actually maybe even knock out Jean Pascal, then I, I would think Lucien Boutet kind of like you know uh, redeemed himself ever since the Froch loss. I, I really think so. That would be enough, but. But uh, considering what I saw in the fight, considering how Liberado Andrada broke down Lucien Boutte late in the fight and then broke him, you know, and he would have knocked him out if it wasn't for that stupid referee um, who, who, who basically gave him a long count, like fucking, what's his name, Tunney, Eugene Tunney, you know, then... Then you know, if it wasn't for that, then I, w I probably would have did this prediction differently. But you know, we all know that Lucien Boutet, you know, breaks down early in fights. I mean, late in fights. Um, okay, next fight coming up is 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 Rios Alvarado too. Now that one is gonna be, you know, obviously we know that one's gonna be guns blazing. We know that one's gonna be all out Mexican duel. We know that one's gonna be the shit because the first one was the shit. The first one was like a candidate for fight of the year. And um, here, here's the thing about those two. You see. Uh, Rios is 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 more like a boxer first, fighter second. Uh, I'm not bad, my bad, my bad. Rios, uh, Bam Bam Rios is is a is a fighter first, boxer second. My bad. I, I don't know why I said that. Alvarado is a boxer first, fighter second, backwards. Okay. So the thing about that is that what Alvarado Andrade, I mean Alvarado, what Alvarado has, my Andrade, not my bad. What Alvarado has over Rios is that he's a student. He can go back and actually analyze Rios, come back and probably knock him out in the first, second, third round. He's got that kind of skill, but he has that Mexican in him. He's got that fighter in him, which means that if you hit him hard enough, that student goes out and here comes the Mexican. Because Mexicans, we have this thing called the default button. I call it the default button. The default button on a Mexican, no matter where you are, whether it's at school, work, in the street, it don't matter. We have the default, that default uh, uh, setting where it's we're like fighting, fighting mode, fighting. It, we're like, boom, 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 something's wrong. Okay, well, well, who do I need to fuck up? You know, we have that that that. At the end of the day, we can fall back, no matter how big you are, how small you are, women or female, Mexicans. At, if you corner us, we fight everybody. Who cares if you're on the floor? Dying, we fight every we start fighting. We're just like Italians, we're just like Irish, we're just like minorities, Mexican uh, American minorities. That's what we are, are, are turned into eventually, you know, especially growing up in the ghetto or whatever, whatever. Um, you know, third world country like Mexico is in, is in Disneyland, so <laughs> you're not gonna get any uh, cartoon characters coming out of that country, but anyways, um, uh, Mexican, uh, when, when, when you hit Alvarado he turns into a Mexican and that's how he lost last time he was lured into a gunfight with with Rios Rios eventually popped him and cracked him down um and this second fight is going to be the same but a little different Alvarado is actually going to calm himself down a little bit he's going to he knows what he did wrong in the first fight he knows that Rios got the best of him psychologically and and and, and then basically took him out of his fight now if Alvarado keeps his distance with his jab and keeps breaking Rios down with his, to the stomach. But the thing is, I don't see Rios stopping. Rios keeps coming at you. You need redonkulous, crippling power to to break down Rios. And I don't think Alvarado is going to find that time. What I mean by the time, I mean the timing. I mean, like, I don't think he's going to time Rios as perfect as I think he is because he's not a finesse boxer. 
Um, he, he's not like, you know, he, he's not going to sharpshoot Rios. I don't think so. If he shocks Rios, I'll be shocked. You know, and, and that's what I would love boxing. That's why I love boxing. But I think it's going to be the same thing. I, the only difference is I think that, that Rios is going to actually get knocked down and hurt bad. Like really hurt bad. But Rios is going to be Rios. And he's going to bam, bam his way into fucking uh, knocking out uh, Alvarado again. Bam, 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 bam. He's going to knock him out. He's going to knock him out again late. And uh, we're going to see another Kennedy fight a year. Because these guys don't know any other way to fight. Okay. Um, here's another fight that I wanted to fight, uh, talk about. Austin Trout versus Canelo Alvarez. Now, I said in early prediction that that fight was not going to happen. I just said that, you know, they wouldn't be stupid enough to give it to, to Canelo. Because when they first gave uh, Cotto to, to Trout, I was like, uh, Trout's going to kick his ass. Dude. Like, 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 why would you do that, you know? And it, sure enough, he kicked his ass as easy as I thought he was. I mean, not easy, but easy-ish. Um, you see, Canelo's going to bring the same kind of pressure that Cotto brings, except not as short and not as light hitting. Cotto was little, you know, compared to uh, Canelo Alvarez. Cotto is, to me, Cotto's a natural welterweight, you know, like his best at welterweight or junior middleweight. But, you know, Canelo, I mean, that's the same way as Canelo, but Canelo is actually like wrong you know the uh Cotto is not strong at that way Cotto is fast and he's 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 sharp he's not strong canelo is strong he's so much fast and he goes to the body now why would i pick trout over canelo because he, canelo is hittable when he was fighting who was it hatton's brother i forgot who canelo was fighting um forget about it he was fighting the tomato can and, and in round 12, was it 12? The tomato can was hitting uh, Canelo with punches he shouldn't be hitting him with. Basically, Canelo does, you know, he, when he gets excited, when he gets his game on, he just, he doesn't care about, he's not a real boxer. He's hittable. He's, you can find Canelo, you know? If the first person that hits Canelo with dynamite in his hands, we're gonna see what Canelo really is. No one has dynamite in his hands so far. <laughs> Josecito Lopez has a little, of magic fingers he's not gonna hurt, hurt him um um what's his name who was the guy before well it doesn't matter he hasn't fought anybody with fucking real knuckles yet um but i think i think trout has enough to fucking make him look stupid i think he's gonna really 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 uh, out out slick i sense a robbery here you know in the favor of canelo you know only because it's canelo and i think we're gonna have another, you know, De La Hoya, Felix Sturm kind of robbery, you know what I mean? Where it looks, where it looks like um, Trout is, is is making him look stupid. But if you go back again, then you're gonna see the sneaky little left hooks to the body that Canelo was, you know, it's one of those controversial fights. But for some reason, I feel like Trout's gonna have, get the best of Canelo. He has that style. If Canelo hurts, breaks down Trout and knocks him out, then Canelo is something else. And then I probably like worry about the results of his P test. No, I'm just kidding. No, but um um but I think Canelo if Canelo does do that to Trout, I think that we all know what he's about. Knocks out Trout, we know what he's about. He knocks out Trout, we know what he's about. But but I, I um I don't see another other diff, other way. I don't see it any other way than Trout out boxing, out slicking uh, Canelo. But that's just me. Maybe maybe I'm, I still have uh, Trout's shining moment against Cotto still replaying in my head. Maybe that's what it is. But you know, it is one of the only fights I've ever seen him fight live. You know, and Cotto is Cotto. Cotto is sure. You know, who else who can't hit? You know, out box Cotto. If you're if you're a little tall and you're solid. Who else couldn't, uh, and you're a student of boxing, who else wouldn't be able to outbox Cotto the way he did? Margarito was tall, he was sloppy, and he broke Margarito, uh, uh, Cotto down. Yeah, you know, you're going to say plaster Paris shit, but still, uh, Cotto couldn't break his way in. But can Canelo break his way in? With those hooks to the body? You might think so. You might think so. Hmm. I just, I, I just, hmm. Hmm. I think I just answered my own question. I think, holy shit. Okay, so Canelo's gonna be tall enough to break in and, and get those hooks to the body. And you know what? Okay, I'm sorry. I'm gonna have to read. 
back up. Okay, let's rewind this. Okay, now let's rewind. Uh, Canelo's gonna win this fight. He's tall enough to to break to to jab his way in and, and use that hook to the stomach to break Trout down. Event, you know, because we never seen Trout actually get hit. And we never seen Trout actually. You know, at, you know, Cotto made it a fight, and if Cotto can make it a fight, struggling. Imagine what a taller, uh, a hungrier, younger, fresher, harder punching uh, Canelo would do. Okay, that sounds more realistic. Canelo's gonna beat Trout. He's gonna, you know, it's gonna be tough. He's gonna Canelo's gonna look stupid the first five rounds, but then eventually uh, uh, Canelo's gonna break him down. The hook to the body. People are gonna say it's a robbery, but it's not. Canelo's gonna do enough to have that fucking win. Okay, sorry, I don't even mean cuz, but but that's what is gonna happen. Now I believe myself. Now it looks more realistic. Now I think that he's gonna get another W on the way up. More like okay, so he beat Trout. Now what? Um, you know, obviously they're not gonna give him to no no no. Nobody's solid yet, you know. He's still somewhat, you know, coming up. I mean, yeah, he. Sh I mean, he is a champion. I mean, who who else would I want to see him with at this weight class? I, I want him to move up. I just think he's a little too big for where he's at right now. Uh, junior middleweight is he? If he's not in middleweight yet, um, might be wrong. But anyways, yeah, when he fought Josecito Lopez, you see how big that motherfucker was, you know. Sorry. Um, but anyways, yeah, that's what it is. Canelo, Canelo's gonna. Uh, Canelo's gonna beat Trout, I guess. Yeah, that's what's gonna happen. Not knock him out, but he's gonna break him down eventually. Trout's gonna slow down at the end, last rounds. And um, obviously, um, Canelo has gone a long way ever since those last fights that I've seen him. He's getting better and better and better and better and better. Uh, so I'm gonna have to give it to him then. Okay, so that's what it is. Jerms one, Jerms boxing. Come back or or look. I'm gonna have a, another a set of predictions. I'm gonna do a. The Nonito Donaire fight, the, the Marquez fight, the, the Malinaji Broner fight. Uh, so, yeah, just, just come back right now or look for the other videos. I'll be uploading them right now, okay? Uh, yeah, Germs, Germs, you want to listen to my music, Germs the Rapper, at whatever, whatever. All right, peace.